Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another semi-daily movie review. Uh, we don't do them every, every single day, but we still do them occasionally. And today we're going to be talking about the 1962 film The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. The film is directed by John Ford, written by James Warner Bella and William Willis Goldbeck. It stars James Stewart, John Wayne, Vera Miles, Lee Marvin, Edmund O'Brien, Andy Devine, Ken Marie, John Carradine, uh, Lee Van Cleef and others. Uh, the plot synopsis log line is a senator returns to a western town for the funeral of an old friend and tells the story of his origins. So yeah, I had never seen The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. At least never seen it that I could remember, right? It's one of these classics, a staple. Um, it's one that people probably just assume without seeing it or whatever, really putting too much critical thought into it. It's a classic, you know? It's just one of these staples of the genre. Um, it's directed by John Ford, who's directed a few of my favorite Westerns. Most notably is The Searchers, and I actually reviewed that a few months ago. I watched The Searchers uh, kind of like for real for the first time. You know, I'd seen it a few times growing up, but I really kind of got into it, and I had kind of a nice, long, thoughtful conversation by myself about it. So you can go check that out if you'd like. But, uh, yeah, so I was curious to go see more of his filmography, and it was just like the day after Thanksgiving, and kind of a lazy day just kind of hanging out and I was like this would be a great day to just kind of chill out and watch an old western you know um it was kind of a big thing at the time you know Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne probably at the height of their fame in a certain respect um you know this is the era of Jimmy Stewart being in kind of Hitchcock stuff like he had done a few few of the bigger Hitchcock movies Rear Window I think Vertigo a few years before this um John Wayne had become kind of legendary. This is also post The Searchers. The Searchers comes out like six years before this does. And um, they're kind of archetypes. You know, Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne kind of played very particular kinds of characters. And this script basically calls on them to be the most archetypal version of the kind of characters they play. Um, you know, Jimmy Stewart being kind of this noble everyman. And John Wayne being kind of the rough and tough cowboy with a slight edge, a slight darkness to him, but it never overtakes him. Um, he really kind of John Wayne, I think even more so than in the searchers is given like a lot of dramatic material. And you kind of see the edges of his ability as an actor um, in terms of believability. Like if you really kind of buy into some of the drama, because uh, there's a kind of a love triangle that goes on. And um, it has an interesting production history as well. It was supposed to be shot kind of in the middle of uh, out in the Midwest, but the budget got cut. Um, I'm not sure why, but the budget got cut and they had to kind of build like a little town on the studio lot. It's shot in black and white. I mean, this is 1962. It was an artistic choice. I think it was a necessity. Um, part of that is because the two leads play younger versions of themselves by like some like 30 years which i didn't really understand why they had to make it this way in particular um you know because these guys they were in their mid 50s when they made this movie and they're playing guys that are like in their late 20s early 30s they don't ever actually say that so you have this kind of got cognitive or you can kind of just go with it. You can just kind of buy into it to a certain degree because they never, like, address it. It's not like something that's constantly brought up. Like, oh, well, you know, hey, what's going on? That's crazy being 29, isn't it? They never they never talk like that. But they are supposed to be considerably younger because in the, in the present day sections of the movie, which is kind of just a bookend at the beginning and at the end, uh, they actually even age them up a little bit, put some old age makeup on, and then they try to you know, young them down a little bit just through kind of a wig. Like Jimmy Stewart has very clearly has on this kind of, I don't know. Well, maybe it's not a wig. It looks kind of looked like a wig, but I don't know. But apparently the legend, as the legend goes, the black and white was maybe to kind of obfuscate the, uh, the fact that they're actually older guys. Vera Miles also, she was a little bit older at this time. You know, she's playing somebody that clearly is supposed to be like 19 or 20. But again, they don't ever really address that. Um, but I did find it a little distracting. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of surprised about that, that how distracting I found uh, the age thing. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know why I just kept, it kept kind of presenting itself, uh, especially cause like in the, you know, in some of the larger cast, they 
cast older people to play younger people too. So I think like Ford is really, really trying to kind of create a verisimilitude about the world and try to get you into this, this, this place where it doesn't distract you that these are all older actors playing younger parts. There's a guy who's like 50 years old who plays a teenager in this movie. I found it distracting. I understand like his and Ford's intention, but um, it did not work for me super well. Um, it has kind of an interesting subtext of the movie, like about kind of um, purpose, decisions that you make, standing up for what's right, um, how the other people in your life affect you and kind of the things that they're willing to do to help other people, you know, cause they have kind of Wayne's character is more of this kind of like, he doesn't want to be involved. Like he gets nominated for like a role in the town and he declines it and then kind of pushes Jimmy Stewart into being nominated. And he's just kind of like, doesn't want to do anything like that, but he has, he's so compelled to do the right thing, even though he's kind of a cad and he's kind of a, a fuck boy a little bit. Uh, <laughs> he just doesn't want to have any direct responsibilities, even though he kind of does take on a lot of responsibility. So there's kind of these things. Cause you know, the movie starts, they go to the funeral, John Wayne's funeral, and they kind of just reminisce about a certain point in, in their, their lives when they intersected. And it ends up being obviously like a very important part of their lives, which sends Jimmy Stewart on the trajectory. He ends up going which is to get into politics. Um, and a lot of that is because of who shot Liberty Valance. Liberty Valance played by um, Lee Marvin, the fan, the great Lee Marvin, who's playing also a little bit older at this time, but he's, and he's playing clearly like a younger dude. <laughs> and it's, again, it was a little distracting, but Lee Marvin, the great Lee Marvin, he's kind of like this, this awful bandit, this awful criminal that kind of has control over this town and, he lives on the outskirts and causes trouble, then comes into town and kind of pulls his weight and everybody's afraid of him. And Jimmy Stewart, you know, ends up shooting him or so we think. So we think he has like a standoff, but Jimmy Stewart's not, uh, not a shootist. Okay. He's not, he's not into that kind of stuff. He can barely shoot a gun. What you find out is that John Wayne's character from the shadows actually is the one that killed Liberty Valance. But Jimmy Stewart's whole life was kind of helped by the fact that everybody thinks he did it, you know? And they were able to justify it because, you know, like they were calling each other out, you know, it ends up being self-defense, I suppose. And back in those days when you would go and have like kind of a duel, you would just kind of make a gentleman's agreement with like the, the sheriff and stuff. Be like, you know, we're going to do this. This is how we're going to take care of business. And it was allowed. I mean, if two men, two grown adults want to call each other out and walk out in the street and shoot, shoot at each other, that was okay. <laughs> or at least in the context of the movie. And, um, yeah, so, you know, Jimmy Stewart gets everything because of that. He ends up getting the girl. He ends up getting, uh, becoming a politician, becoming a name. And John Wayne kind of lives in obscurity. He just kind of continues on his life. He doesn't have all of these accolades that maybe he would have gotten if people knew that. So Jimmy Stewart, though, was kind of happy just to live this lie to a certain degree for most of his life. And, um, and it's unclear at the end if when he's retelling the story, if he actually tells the truth about what happened or if he keeps it to himself. You know, I was not 100% sure because, you know, he wanted to... So a bunch of reporters are there because it was a big deal. He's like a famous senator and they go and he's like, OK, let me tell you the story about about this guy, about John Wayne's character, about Tom Donovan. Let me tell you about Tom Donovan. And then it fades into the into the past, like does like the fucking Wayne's world. And they start uh, and he starts retelling the story from his perspective about what happened. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm of two minds of this movie. I think it is a good movie and it's got some solid performances. Not my favorite Jimmy Stewart, not my favorite John Wayne, not my favorite John Ford movie either. Uh, John Ford's, I think his, I think his crowning achievement is the searchers. And in a weird way, this movie 
feels old hat because of the searchers the searchers is such a beautiful period on the end of kind of the life of the western genre and it, and it has everything and it's a big lavish production where this felt very small very scale but still not but not super intimate you know it's a character piece but it just feels very like it feels like a movie from the 1940s that's how that's how it came off to me like i was just not really vibing with it i guess i was really surprised because i you know i like everybody in the movie and i like john ford um and it's shot about as well as i suppose he could given where he had to shoot it it just felt like a tv movie like something that you would see it felt like a play in a weird way like you could do a version of the man who shot liberty valens on the stage and you wouldn't actually even have to change very much to be honest with you um, if somebody, maybe somebody wants to do that. Maybe you should do that. Maybe you, you should do it. You should write the, the stage version of the man who shot Liberty Valance and put it out there to the world. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I don't know if people are going to give me shit or not, but, uh, I was surprised at how kind of flat it fell for me. I don't know. I don't know. I was just had a hard time getting into it for some reason. Maybe it was the circumstances under which I watched it. That's possible. But even then, even having said that, though, it's it's better than most movies that you'll see. You know, this is relative to kind of who you know John Ford is and what he's capable of. That's kind of what I'm talking about. Surprisingly enough, though, I mean, people love The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. It has a higher higher rating on IMDb. It has a higher meta score than The Searchers does, which I was really surprised. Like, The Searchers is so seminal. I mean such a in my opinion like a perfect american western you know it's because this is the thing that kind of spurs the spaghetti western on because this is after the search this is made that's it for fucking american westerns in my opinion and anything after that just felt tired you know they did such a good job just addressing every issue that westerns ever had with the searchers that doing this kind of, even though it's a kind of a smaller, more personal story, it's not as sprawling. It's not as uh, as big and broad as the searchers is, because the searchers got a lot of like cultural commentary and about the passage of time and who holds who back. This is much more so- smaller scale. So maybe that's what it was in my head. You know, maybe I just am too stuck on like the searchers, and that's a completely fair criticism of what I have to say about the movie. Um, but there was something just felt kind of cheap and not, and it was, I felt I was distracted constantly by that. Like I can't, I don't understand. You could have told this story <laughs> and just had it be older people. Like I can believe that these guys were in their forties, maybe but not fucking 30. That's just a bridge too far. Everyone bridge too far for this old man. Anyways. Uh, yeah, that was kind of rambling, but Hey, it is what it is. Anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, there's a bunch of links in the description for Facebook, for Instagram, for my Twitter, for Dan's Twitter. Also, if you'd like to make a suggestion for one of these daily movie reviews or something for Zoobox Goes to the Movies, or even a topic to be discussed on Zoobox Prime or Zoobox Live, leave it in the comments and we will uh, put it on the list for serious consideration. You have the best one ever.